Well, welcome to the 700 Club. The Tea Party movement may be on the verge of claiming a political victim. And he's not a Democrat. He's a Republican. Hmm. Florida's Republican Governor Charlie Crist is considering leaving the GOP to run as an independent for the U.S. Senate. David Brody explains why. Charlie Crist has seen better days. The once popular Florida governor may be wondering what Mack truck hit him. Marco Rubio is the name of that Mack truck. He's the conservative Tea Party loving candidate challenging Crist for the U.S. Senate seat in Florida. In a political climate of fiscal discipline and tea bags galore, Chris' centrist resume isn't playing well in 2010. The Tea Party has mobilized against him, and Chris didn't help himself when he appeared on stage a while back with President Obama touting the big stimulus bill. Rubio tells CBN News it was a major blunder. When Charlie Chris stood on that stage and became one of the only Republicans, prominent Republicans in the country, to campaign for the stimulus, not just to endorse it, but to campaign for the stimulus, he cut the legs out from underneath all of those people that were working so hard to offer an alternative. Chris could star in his own movie version of Legends of the Fall. Check out his poll number nosedive. In August of last year, he was handily beating Rubio, 53 to 31 percent. In December, they were tied. Now, Rubio is up by nearly 30 points. Chris is no dummy. He's now thinking of getting out of the GOP and running as an independent. Well, I can tell you, I'm getting a lot of advice in that direction. And so I'm a listener. And so I'm, I'm certainly listening to it. He'd be smart to do so, considering he may be able to win the Senate race as an independent. But make no mistake. The Tea Party movement is trying to change the GOP and bring it back to its conservative roots. Senator Jim DeMint is a main player in that movement and told me that centrist thinking Republicans from the party like Christ are a real problem. When you heard that news, when that got to you, what were some of your impressions? I think we're seeing with Charlie Christ, it's not about principle. It's not about the Republican Party. It's about the numbers. And if the numbers don't work in the Republican Party, he's looking to see if if they'll work as an independent. We don't need to build a Republican Party around people like that. Charlie Chris seems to be getting that message loud and clear. David Brody, CBN News, Washington. Well, this seems to be happening in both parties. Uh, in the last election, it was Senator Lieberman in Connecticut. He had to go independent. He couldn't even win the Democratic nomination, uh, but he still won the race as an independent. So uh, are, are these groups going to just further give us polarization between the parties um, and uh, not allow us any kind of centrist so we can have common ground. This is going to be a very fascinating election year, and this is just the first of an unfolding drama of how the political landscape in America is changing. If you want to track it, you can see more. Uh, David Brody is putting out an Internet show called The Brody File. This week, he's inter interviewing Senator Jim DeMint, and you can watch it by going to our website at CBN.com. Well, Lee Webb has the rest of our top stories from the CBN newsroom. Lee? Gordon, Islam's rapid rise in Europe is beginning to face stiff opposition. France and Belgium are trying to ban Islamic veils for women. As Eric Stackelbeck reports, lawmakers say the move will help preserve European culture. From big cities to small towns, Islam's growing influence in Europe is obvious. Now lawmakers in some European countries are seeking to ban one of the most divisive symbols of Islamic identity, the face veil worn by many Muslim women. Belgium is set to become the first European country to ban the burqa and other Islamic garb that completely covers a woman's face and body. Supporters of the ban say this clothing has no place in Europe. Wearing a burqa in public is not compatible with an open, evolved, liberal and tolerant society, which respects human beings for what they are. France is also preparing to ban Islamic veils that cover the face in public places. French President Nicolas Sarkozy has called the veil repressive and an assault on the dignity of women. Muslim leaders in France say this view is Islamophobic, and they have supporters on the political left who share their view. Bans like this do more harm than good. Um, they violate the rights of women who choose to wear the veil, and they do nothing to help women uh, who feel they're compelled to wear the veil. The Netherlands may be the next country to propose a ban on veils. Women in Belgium who violate the ban would face fines and possibly jail time. 
Eric Stackelbeck, CBN News. President Obama says he will announce his nominee for the Supreme Court before the end of May. He invited Democrat and Republican senators to the White House to talk about the confirmation process. The president told them there will be no litmus test for choosing a nominee. He was then asked specifically about abortion. I want somebody who is going to be interpreting uh, our Constitution in a way that takes into account uh, individual rights, and that includes women's rights. The president has begun to contact some of the potential nominees to replace retiring Justice John Paul Stevens, but the White House says there have been no formal interviews. President Obama on Wall Street today urging Congress to pass the financial overhaul bill. The president says new regulations are needed to prevent another financial meltdown. The House passed its version of the bill in December. It's now in the Senate, where all Republicans are promising to block it unless changes are made. They say the bill encourages big banks to take big risks and expect future bailouts. Democrats disagree. They argue the bill does not allow for bailouts, but would instead lead them into bankruptcy. The Billy Graham Library has reopened to the public after months of renovations. Reverend Graham made a rare appearance at the special rededication, and Mark Martin has that report. A room full of family and friends applaud Billy Graham as he arrives at the rededication dinner. His grandson describes it as a family reunion and says everyone's talking about the excellent health of the 91-year-old evangelist. Really excited about how my granddaddy's been doing physically. My granddaddy's been in great physical health uh, in the last uh, couple months, and so we're real grateful for that. The family is also grateful for the Billy Graham Library, which celebrates the life of a man yielded to God. A new and improved library, which now features a large 15 by 31 foot mural by Thomas Kincaid. It's simply named the cross. Billy Graham's son Franklin says the walk to see the mural through these lighted crosses is like the icing on the cake. Other changes include a new video welcome from Franklin, his father's personal library of about 10,000 books, Billy Graham's old desk and chair, and his late wife Ruth's wedding dress. Franklin says his father is especially fond of the room dedicated to Ruth. He loved my mother's room. Uh, he just went back there and sat for a while. Uh, you know, it just, uh, he misses her greatly. So I think that's his favorite room is the room about my mother. Franklin Graham says these renovations could not get done in time for the library's original opening three years ago. The changes that we have made have strengthened the ministry. Uh, there is a clear presentation of the gospel uh, as you go through uh, from room to room. Some of the exhibits focus on Billy Graham's crusades, looking back on times of powerful ministry, but perhaps pointing to the future as well. He's really got a lot more energy. I mean, he's really talking about wanting to preach one more time. Will Graham says if his grandfather were to preach again, it might not be in a stadium, but instead by television, which would be easier on the evangelist. Mark Martin, CBN News. The library is located in Charlotte, North Carolina, and admission is free. Lawmakers from both parties have joined to save the National Day of Prayer. A federal judge ruled the annual event unconstitutional. Lawmakers want the Obama administration, though, to appeal that ruling, and supporters are willing to take the case all the way to the Supreme Court. John Jessup has that story now from Washington. It was Congress in 1952 that designated the National Day of Prayer as a time to turn to God in prayer and meditation. Now it's current members of Congress who are trying to save the tradition. This decision is not representative of a vast majority of Americans, regardless of their faith, or even their, non, their non faith. Congressman Randy Forbes, chairman of the Congressional Prayer Caucus, and Democrat Ambassador Tony Hall are rallying bipartisan support for the National Day of Prayer after a recent ruling by a Wisconsin judge that it's unconstitutional. The key phrase here it says, on which the people of the United States may, M A Y, may turn to God in prayer and, and meditation. And when you think about that, that's not forcing anybody. Last time I heard that you may do something, that's not you shall, you may. The Freedom From Religion Foundation sued the government in 2008 under President Bush, claiming the National Day of Prayer violated the separation of church and state. 
The Obama administration asked the judge to dismiss the case, but she didn't. The suit was updated and amended before U.S. District Judge Barbara Crabb ruled it's because the nature of prayer is so personal and can have such a powerful effect on a community that the government may not use its authority to try to influence an individual's decision whether and when to pray. The United States Congress has no business, no authority, and frankly not a great deal of talent in telling people how to be better Americans. Members of the Congressional Prayer Caucus are challenging the ruling, saying it's discrimination against America's foundation. This judge basically says that her opinion is more important than the historical statements and actions of the people who drafted the Constitution. This year's observance is set for May 6, with millions of people expected to participate around the country. And this legal fight may just be one of the things they pray about. John Jessup, CBN News, Washington. Hmm. Gordon, uh, counselor, how would you argue that case before the high court? Oh, there's plenty of historical argument for it, but th those arguments have been made, made before. I actually think this is wonderful. It's, it's, a, it's an opportunity to go back and, and revisit the legal landscape uh, that's led us to these um, somewhat, uh, not somewhat, remarkably off-center uh, decisions coming out of the federal bench. That um, in, and essentially they're following the logic that any endorsement of religion by government is improper under the First Amendment establishment clause that prohibits Congress from creating any law respecting the establishment of religion. But when you divorce that from the history behind the establishment clause, that you know you're 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 coming out of a, a society organized around the Church of England. And you're saying, we don't want a state church. We want freedom of conscience. We want um, uh, as many expressions of religion as possible. Uh, I, I don't see how that goes to, we want no expression of religion and no expression of religion coming from the government. To say the government cannot promote the welfare of the United States citizen uh, is somewhat absurd. Uh, you know, if you follow down that track, then there should be no Department of Education and no Department of Health and Human Services. Uh, it is government's business to promote the common welfare, and, and part of that is reminding us all that we all depend on providence, and that has been a cornerstone of our culture since George Washington, and he routinely would seek providence and pray to God, and he talks specifically about Jesus Christ and his need for the blood of Jesus Christ to cover him. Uh, so to, to divorce ourselves from our history is an absolute mistake. And what will be next? Uh, are we going to see a lawsuit saying uh, the establishment of Thanksgiving uh, is unconstitutional? Uh, after all, Thanksgiving means thanks to God. Uh, we're all supposed to gather together, have a day off where we rejoice in the benefits that God has given us. Uh, and, and give him thanks. Uh, that's the purpose of that day. So, um, you know, looking at it right now, to see Democrats and Republicans joining together in common cause, I think that's wonderful. If we can uh, take it up to the Supreme Court and have the Supreme Court say, wait a minute, uh, we need to rebalance here. Uh, we've gone way off of the intent of the Establishment Clause and redefine. It could be a landmark case. Uh, and allow us once again to be one nation under God. Christy? You know, Gordon, it's so funny as you're talking, I keep thinking to myself, you know, we just, you know, to take it from a private citizen, a private citizen who's a Christian, okay, you might want to take that one day of national prayer, but let me tell you this, there's 365 days of the year, <laughs> and I don't care what you say, we're going to collectively pray, and God's going to reign again in this country. Well, coming up, if you aren't one, chances are you know one. Who am I talking about? single moms. My mother used to always tell me, you're not the first woman that's ever had this happen to you. So get up, get going, and we don't have to go under the mountain, we can go over the mountain. This Congresswoman's crusade to help single moms, up next on the 700 Club. I'm often asked the question, is investing in gold right for me? In fact, many people think that owning gold is only for the wealthy, but you can own gold with a minimal investment. It's easy to own gold. At Goldline, our clients invest in physical gold, not gold stocks or gold funds. Call Goldline and talk with an account executive who can answer your questions and discuss the available gold products, like our popular European coins or proof American coins. 
Your gold is then shipped directly to you, or we will arrange storage for you. Goldline has been helping investors acquire precious metals since 1960, and we work with new clients every day who have decided that it's time to invest in gold. Isn't it time that you consider gold? I invite you to join the thousands of hardworking, satisfied clients who have chosen Goldline to help diversify by investing in gold. Call Goldline now and receive a free investor's kit and the American Advisor newsletter. Our account executives are here six days a week to serve you. Give us a call today. Tomorrow. I just cried when I heard her story. How one children's book is changing the lives of an entire country. Our people need this information. I'm going to take what I learned here and share it with others. And then, doctors give up hope for one baby boy. He said your child is very, very sick, dying sick. So did his parents, but not this four-year-old girl. Ask anything in his name and it shall be done. Tomorrow on the 700 Club. Well, one quarter of American children live with a single parent, and most of those parents are single moms. Many of those moms need a job skill and support. Well, recently, one organization was invited to Capitol Hill to help them. Jennifer Wishon explains. They all have different stories and circumstances. Some are divorced. Some got pregnant out of wedlock. Others lost their husbands at war. But no matter how they became single moms, they all faced the same struggles. Oklahoma Congresswoman Mary Fallon knows about them personally. She raised her children on her own for years, all while pursuing a fast-paced career in politics as her state's first female lieutenant governor and as a member of the House of Representatives. My mother used to always tell me, you're not the first woman that's ever had this happen to you. So get up, get going, and you know, we don't have to go under the mountain, we can go over the mountain. We, can, we don't have to have a pity party, you know, we can rise above all that. Helping women rise above it and stopping what she calls the generational curse that's passed down from grandmother to mother to grandchild is something Fallon is passionate about. And I really think one of the ways that we can better our states is by empowering our citizens and letting them know that they're not alone and helping him find a better path to life. She recently invited a rise ministries to Capitol Hill. The Oklahoma-based ministry has been helping single moms thrive for six years and is on a mission to expand nationwide. I believe that we as citizens, uh, especially Christians in the church, it's our responsibility to reach out to these modern-day orphans and widows. The ministry was born in Pam Kennelly's heart. She was a single mom, too. The ministry is based on Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. There is no better example of its outreach than a two-day event held each year. Two days that often change the lives of single moms forever. It's amazing. You know, one single mom once said, one time said, you know what? All year long, you know, I give and give and give to my children, but survive and thrive is my Christmas. While the kids play in childcare, moms are given the royal treatment and taught life skills like overcoming anger and bitterness, dealing with their children's dad, handling teenagers, time management, and even taking care of things like a broken toilet. When that happens, it doesn't spew off the bottom of that tank. Arise has already been welcomed into five states. On Capitol Hill, Cannelly and Executive Director Shelley Pulliam urged lawmakers to help them grow even more. Unlike most people here, they're not looking for money, just contacts. It is the belief of the ministry that the plight of single moms affects everyone. If you aren't one, chances are you know one, because about a quarter of children in the U.S. now live with a single mom. These are women struggling to be everything to their children who are America's future leaders. It's a struggle on many levels. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, less than half of single moms awarded child support actually receive the full amount. And that's just the beginning. Fatherless homes account for high numbers of children with behavior problems, high school dropouts, young people in prison, and youth suicides. As a teacher working in both affluent and poor schools, Shelley Pulliam says she's seen the effect on children firsthand. I've seen the kids be affected through taking on those burdens that their mom is feeling. I've seen a decline in their grades. I've seen anger and unforgiveness. I've seen tears. That's why moms say the Survive and Thrive Conference makes such a difference. I feel strong again. You know, when I came here, I was broken, and I got a lot to fix still, but I feel able to go on. Some even go home with Jesus in their hearts. 
We can do anything we want to do. Our life circumstances don't have to hold us back. Congresswoman Mary Fallon is proof. Jennifer Wish on CBN News, Washington. I got to tell you, you know, Gordon, I have a whole mouthful here because, <laughs> I, you know, just watching that, I love organizations like that because as a single mom myself, sometimes I feel like that's the lost sector in the church that, you know, no one really knows how to handle or no, no one knows how to deal with. So um, well, it's, it's also challenging. Like we have to create a new um, um, standard yeah. uh, for taking care of single moms mm -hmm. and, you know, get rid of the... Well, you know, well, this is a, a result of divorce, mm -hmm. and and in in the New Testament, you literally didn't have it. It mm -hmm. was just on a social basis; it wasn't uh, acceptable. Yeah. Um, but you did have wid widows and orphans, and the commandment there to take care of them is is just absolute. And so, we just naturally gravitate to that. But mm -hmm. we just don't understand with single moms. The huge need that they the have. The huge need. I mean, you know, Gordon, I could take it down to such an elementary level, and that, you know, when my son was first born and my, my ex husband chose to leave, I remember thinking, I have a television and I can't move it from one, one room to the next. And I sat there and I thought, how am I going to do this? And I called the people that I, I knew to help, and no one could help me. And I remember sitting on my floor crying, saying, you know, because people were busy. Oh, I don't, you know, can you call such and such? I'm not available. Can you call such and such? I remember sitting on my floor weeping, saying, Lord, I can't even have someone help me move this TV. Do you ever run into um, something where um, men would feel reluctant to help you on the basis that, you know, there, there, there could be some rumor started from that? Sure. It's on every single level. You have, you know, some women are like, oh, my husband is not about to help you, to, you know, the women are like, well, I have my kids for myself. I can't help you because I'm trying to help myself. And so, you know, so people, both sides are like, sorry. So the positive is that you really, for me, I had to learn to rely on the Lord like no man's business. I remember sitting on that floor saying, Lord, you said that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So you got to help me put this computer together. I don't know how, so you're going to teach me. And now I find myself, you know, cleaning up the toilet. Putting computers together? Putting computers, computers together, wow. cleaning up the toilets, lifting I'm up impressed. that television. Come on, Skinny Wednesday worked for something. <laughs> <laughs> I can now pick it up. Get a smaller TV. I know, right? But yeah, there are definitely challenges. And I think that, you know, in the church, we need to be wise. You know, if your husband's mm. going to help, wife, come along too and say, you know, let there well, be the church accountability. Could create a group that, that is dedicated to do that. Yeah. And, and you can just ensure that there's a group that helps. Sure, and it's not absolutely. an individual. An individual yeah. And that way, it's, it's, it's wonderful. I was yeah. at a, um, a church that was uh, having a single mom's sort of weekend kind of thing. And they were doing all kinds of stuff from uh, makeovers. They were doing yeah. the nails mm -hmm. and the hair mm -hmm. and, and just the, the, the just feeling special. Yeah. And is there anything that you need repaired? Yes. Is there anything that you, you need some help? Mm -hmm. Just, you know, can you, can you just take a mommy day? Mm -hmm. We'll take the kids. Mm -hmm. We'll do what's needed. And, and you're queen for the day. Yeah. It's the little things like that that make the difference. I know people say, well, I'll pray for you. Well, prayer is lovely, but, you know. Right. Be warmed and filled. <laughs> I know, right? Can you help us? Yeah, James anyway. talked about that. And, and so, you know, for you, if, you know, in your churches, um, you know, maybe go talk to your pastor. If you're mm -hmm. a pastor, talk to, um, you know, your, your members and say, can we do something here? Can, can we help? Uh, can we uh, help? The, uh, the, the need is obvious. And can we organize mm -hmm. so that uh, the single moms in our congregation can get help and have a way where this is not some shame to it. It's, it's something we can all rejoice over. And I think it would be a wonderful ministry. Mm -hmm. And uh, you'll reap many benefits. Mm -hmm. We'll be back with more of the 700 Club right after this. Coming up later... He signed on for the full ride. You know, rap life, rock star life. To me, it was, you know, great. Then he had second thoughts. I wasn't proud when, uh, you know, my songs were played in front of my mother or my nephew. How this gangster rapper left 3-6 Mafia on today's 700 Club. What makes the miracles of Jesus even more miraculous? Standing where they happened, in Israel. Come sail the Sea of Galilee, where Jesus calmed a raging storm. Experience Jerusalem, where Jesus restored a paralyzed man. Explore Capernaum, where Jesus spoke a centurion servant into health. To learn more about standing where it all happened in Israel, visit GoIsrael.com. Come visit Israel.
If you love fresh garden tomatoes but hate digging, bending, and weeding, then get off the ground and grow your tomatoes upside down with the Topsy Turvy Tomato Planter. Only the original Topsy Turvy has our patented grow bag technology. The sun warms the planter like a greenhouse, so the root system explodes, giving you up to 30 pounds of delicious garden tomatoes with no digging or weeding. Perfect for small yards, patios, even your porch. So grow your tomatoes the easy way and get your Topsy Turvy today. Full product line available at the Home Depot. All over the world, there are minds to inspire and opportunities for change. At Regent University, we prepare you to become a Christian leader and guide others in all walks of life. And with online classes from Regent, you can change the world. From anywhere in the world, Regent University, online education with a solid foundation. Visit anywhere.regent.edu or call 866-REGENT-U to request your welcome kit. Delmar Lawrence embodied hip-hop as a rapper for the hardcore group 3-6 Mafia. Known as Mr. Dell, he indulged himself in parties, drugs, and women, and he still ended up feeling empty. Former member of and songwriter for 3-6 Mafia, Delmar Lawrence, saw his life change overnight. A lot of girls, a lot of drugs, a lot of drinking, a lot of partying. You know, it was, I mean, rap life, rock star life. It was, it was, to me, it was, you know, great. Dell's rough childhood sent him to the streets. An abusive stepfather, which uh, did a lot of wear and tear on me physically, mentally, and emotionally. All we could do is just really just, you know, hold each other at night, cry ourselves to sleep. Dell knew instantly the first time he heard hip hop that this was his deal. Because I was writing poetry before that. So here's this art form of music that speaks to who I am, that represents who I am. Music soothed his raw emotions. Gang members and rappers became his family. Rappers, they, you know, at that time, they looked like drug dealers, you know, big gold chains, and big cars, and, you know, just the things they would talk about. I could relate. Soon after his rock star life started, Dell realized something was missing. I mean, I, I loved it. But after you witness all of that, you're like, is that it? My soul felt empty, you know, like it was no purpose in what I was doing. I always wanted something with meaning, something with passion, something that not only people can feel, but I can feel, and I can feel proud to do. I remember I wasn't proud when, uh, you know, my songs were played in front of my mother or my nephew. When Dell came off the road, he slipped into the back row at church to surprise his family, just as the service let out. That's when I heard God speak to me for the first time. And uh, then he gave me a vision, and it was me in this auditorium. And um, I was up on stage, and it was so many people. And uh, I just felt the power of God in the building. You know, so when I saw that vision, something illuminated inside of me, you know, and I was like, okay, God, if I do this, you're going to have to take care of me. And then he said, trust me. And right in that seat, I decided to dedicate my life to God. Dell told the group he was leaving. Immediately, he began working on his first gospel album, Enter the Light. This generation um, is very important to God uh, and that no matter what they have been through or what kind of attacks the enemy has thrown out at the family, at uh, young people early, that Jesus is still in business. He can definitely change your life because he's changed my life. And I'm a part and, and have dedicated my life to being a soldier for his cause. Jesus is still interested in this generation. He's still interested in you. He hasn't given up on you. God had a great dream for all of us. He wanted us to be in a garden. He wanted to provide for us. He, he wanted to be our God, for us to be his people, to be his children. And he set it up so that everything would be provided. We'd have joy and peace, purpose. And then the best part, he'd come down in the cool of the evening and just talk with us and walk with us and be with us. 
and show us everything. Lead us into all truth. That's his dream. That's what he wanted. Now, we messed it up. You know, we went looking for things that we shouldn't have gone looking for. And, you know, you, you can try the things of the world. You heard Delmar. I mean, he, from the world's perspective, money, fame, um, girls, uh, things that would intoxicate you. He, he had all of that. And yet at the end of the day, he was still empty. And he didn't find what he was looking for until they slipped into the back of a church. They didn't even go to the service. He was waiting for the end of it. <laughs> slipped into the back of the church to surprise his family. See, I'm here. You know, he's trying to make a show. But there, in that seat, God spoke to him and showed him a dream, showed him a purpose, showed him light. And it's interesting, his response, well, God, if I do this, you're going to have to take care of me. Not realizing, well, that's, God inten that's God's intention from the, from the beginning, to take care of us, to look after us, to father us. Now, that gave him purpose. That gave him meaning. That gave him what he was looking for. What about you? Uh, can you hear what God is speaking to you right now? You know, he says to you that what he says to everyone, behold the plans that I have for you to give you a hope and a purpose. The, Paul wrote that he, he created things for us to walk into, good things, good works, for us to walk into. He did all of that before he created the earth. He saw that far in the future. He saw you. And he made a plan for you. And he still has a dream for you. What you can be if you can only come into relationship with him. If you can only get hooked up with God. Now, if this is for you. All you have to do is the same thing that Delmar did. Just from your chair, just be quiet before him. Ask him to speak to you. Ask him to show you. It's one of my favorite prayers. Jesus, if you're real, will you show me? If you have a plan for me, could, could you give me a glimpse of it? Could you, can you give me a hope? and a future. Well, if you want this, just bow your head right now. Don't turn away. Don't change the channel. Let today be your day where you give up chasing the things that you know, you already know, don't fulfill. And you find the one thing, your creator, the one thing, your father, who can give you that peace, and give you that joy, and give you fulfillment. Pray with me. Let today be the day you find your dream, the dream uniquely created for you, what he made you to do and to be. You can find it today if you just ask. Pray with me. Jesus, that's right, say it out loud. Jesus, if you're there, if you're real, I want to know you. I want to know the plans that you have for me. I want to hear your voice. I want to feel your presence. I want to know that you're there. So Jesus, right now, I open my heart to you. And I ask that you come in. I ask that you forgive me of the things that I've done wrong. Just as I forgive those who have done wrong things to me. And Jesus, if you'll speak to me, if you'll be with me, 
I want to follow you all the days of my life. Hear my prayer, for I pray it in Jesus' name. Father, for those who just prayed, I pray a baptism in your love. I pray that your presence would surround them and be in them and fill them to overflowing. And right now, open their ears that they can hear. Open their eyes that they can see and give them a heart of understanding. For I ask it now in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible says that if you'll believe in your heart and then confess with your mouth, you shall be saved. What I want you to do is make a toll-free call, 1-800-759-0700. Just say, prayed with that guy uh, guy on TV. I want to confess right now. I just did that. I just prayed. I just asked Jesus to come in. The person on the other end of that line is just there for you. We're not here to condemn you. We're here to bring you the love of Jesus Christ. If there's anything on your heart that you want to confess, if there's anything separating you from God, you just want to get rid of it. You don't have to give us your name, anything like that. You just want to have things right between you and God. You want to get right with God. Call us, 1-800-759-0700. Christy, over to you. Thanks, Gordon. Well, still ahead, a struggling artist gets a huge break. A publisher walked into my little business and asked if I would want to be published. I mean, of all things, I wasn't even looking for them. They came looking for me. Find out why they came looking for her and what led her to financial freedom. Up next on the 700 Club. During the spring each year, the entire staff of CBN sets aside a special week of prayer. Each day we pray for you and your family. We care about you and the things that you need in your life today. Whether it's large or small, it matters to God and we want to pray for you. We believe in a God who answers prayer. Last year, over 22,000 people called reporting an answer to prayer. And we want to see the Lord accomplish miracles in your life. Please mail your prayer request today. It's our privilege to pray for you. I was in a lot of pain. I remember feeling, I don't want to have cancer. Why is this happening? I went to pray with my 10-year-old. He said that he wished he had two hearts because one of them was breaking. I had to reassure her a lot that I'm going to be okay. Things are going to be all right. You know, God's on our side. This is one thing that Cancer Treatment Center does for people. They give them the courage and the strength to battle cancer. When you first walk in that building, you almost feel like there's the presence of the Holy Spirit. It is about the patient, it is only about the patient, and what is it that they need, and what do they want. Call now and we'll send you this free DVD that shows you how our very special team of experts and caregivers put you at the center of everything we do. Hope is alive at Cancer Treatment Centers of America. I don't really see how anyone can get through a life-threatening disease without the Lord in their life. He gives us the strength that we need to carry on. Welcome back to the 700 Club. Pentagon leaders are, quote, very confident that the U.S. could intercept a ballistic missile strike from Iran. A recent Defense Department report warns that Iran could have a missile capable of hitting the U.S. by 2015. The U.S. has 25 long-range interceptor missiles in Alaska and California and continues to build up weapon shields in Europe and the Persian Gulf to protect allies. The Pentagon is pushing, though, for tougher sanctions against Iran. The death toll from the earthquake in China is nearly 2,200. Forecasters say sleet and snow could hinder recovery efforts. More than 80 people are still missing, but one miraculous story is inspiring hope. A four-year-old girl and a 68-year-old woman were lifted from their collapsed mud home five days after the quake. Relatives used bamboo poles to send food and water through gaps to keep the two alive. You can always get the latest from CBN News by going to our website at CBN.com. Gordon and Christie will be back with more of the 700 Club after this. The drugstore acne aisle is probably not the first place you choose to spend your free time. And yet that's what people do, waiting and waiting and waiting for some great new breakout treatment to show up. 
If only they realized that breakouts, even mild ones, are a medical problem. And who do you call about medical problems? Doctors. So if you get breakouts, one, call your doctor. And two, ask about prescription Epiduo gel. Once a day, Epiduo gel combines two of the most prescribed ingredients for acne. That's the Duo and Epiduo. Together, they work on the pimples you have and help prevent new ones from forming. Dryness, redness, peeling, stinging, burning, or itching may occur. Don't use irritating products when using Epiduo. Overexposure to sun, sun lamps, extreme wind, or cold may increase the risk of irritation. Use of sunscreen or protective clothing is advised. To find out more about Once a Day Epiduo gel and get back to your life, talk to your doctor. Or go to Epiduo.com and learn how you could pay no more more than $35 for your Epiduo gel prescription. Finding something you need at a discounted price is exciting, right? Well, today I've got great news. The best investments of the 21st century, gold and silver, both are great values right now. That's right. This is a major buying opportunity in the strongest bull market in decades. And now's the time to take action. Here's why. Following major gold dips, prices historically rise an average of 36%. So, if this pattern continues, gold may soon rise to $1,400 an ounce. You better seize at this golden opportunity today. Protect and grow your assets with gold from the only company I trust, Swiss America. Education is the first step. Call or visit online today for the Pat Boone 2010 Rare Opportunity Kit. Now's the time to own the best investments of the century from the best company in the country at the best prices of the year. Call now. Tomorrow. I just cried when I heard her story. How one children's book is changing the lives of an entire country. Our people need this information. I'm going to take what I learned here and share it with others. And then... Doctors give up hope for one baby boy. He said your child is very, very sick, dying sick. So did his parents, but not this four-year-old girl. Ask anything in his name and it shall be done. Tomorrow on the 700 Club. Well, Mother's Day is just a few weeks away, and we've got a great way for you to honor your mom and have a chance to win a Caribbean cruise for two. Okay, so I know your ears are perked up because mine are. All right, so this is what you have to do. Just tell us the best advice your mother ever gave you in 200 characters or less or in a 30-second video. And you can always log on to CBN.com and click on the Mother's Knows Best Contest banner. You see all the contest details are right there. And remember, once again, that the grand prize is a Caribbean cruise. And remember, for two. Christy is not eligible to participate. <laughs> Who said I'm not eligible? <laughs> I said. <laughs> well, what All if I, employees of CBN Operation Blessing. Well, what if I no. went on the cruise to cover the story? No. Okay. No. <laughs> I tried. Yeah. That assignment's already been made. <laughs> what, are you going? No. <laughs> All right. well, that's a good idea. I know. <laughs> All right. Well, many artists are waiting for their big break. Linda Spivey got hers without even looking. In fact, Linda's big break came looking for her. Linda Spivey is doing what she always dreamed of, working as a professional artist. But for years, she had to be content working as a full-time nurse, while her husband designed controllers for large machinery. Even with both incomes, they lived modestly. We live paycheck to paycheck. Uh, there were many times when the boys needed things and their shoes needed to be replaced and I could replace one son's shoes, but the other one had to wait longer because there just wasn't money. So to bring in additional money, she began selling some of her art at a friend's local gallery. While the extra income helped, money was still tight. Then one Sunday at church, Linda's pastor taught about tithing, a concept that was new to her. She decided to try it and within three months, a publisher walked into my little business and asked if I would want to be published. I mean, of all things, I wasn't even looking for them. They came looking for me. God, God brought them to me. And I have been with this publisher ever since, and it has just blessed us in unbelievable ways. Commissions poured in, and Linda became busy designing art for all types of businesses. I was tithing, but I had forgotten that during this time period, things could change. I hadn't, I hadn't even thought about that until after it was all over and we put it all together. I'm going, wow, it's working. It was working so well that within a year, Linda quit nursing to pursue art full time. 
Now her folk art is featured in catalogs and department stores across the country. It totally made up that difference in my income. And then after a, a number of years, it made up the difference of my husband's income. And he, was, he retired early because of that. We live a debt-free lifestyle and it's very liberating. It's very liberating to know that you don't owe for a car, you don't owe for your house. Beyond her tithe, Linda also gives to CBN. I love all the projects that, that um, the 700 Club is, is doing, the disaster relief and the wells they're digging. We are touching lives all over the world, and this is what we're supposed to be doing. And so even though I stay in my little room painting all the time, it's nice that I can be a part of something bigger than that. God is full of creative ideas, and he wants to give them to his children. Uh, and what does it take to start accessing that? Well, just being with him and doing life the way he says uh, we ought to do. Part of that is giving. And when we give, God opens up windows of heaven and pours out blessings we can't contain. He'll give you creative ideas. He'll give you ability. He'll give you a strategy on marketing. He'll, he'll do a lot of things for you if you just will let him. You know, his, his heart cry, you can hear it. Well, if you'll only let me help you, then you'll have plenty. These aren't my words. These are words from the Bible. This is what God's heart is. So let him help you. And today, if you want to get on the plus side of giving, all you have to do is call us. 1-800-759-0700 or you can log on to CBN.com. We're asking you to join in everything we're doing around the world. It's amazing that you can just sit in your living room, be at work, and be confident that you're helping people, whether it's in China, India, Africa, Latin America, Indonesia. We're doing it around the world, and you're a part of it because a portion of every gift to the 700 Club goes into the work of Operation Blessing to bring help to people. Another portion goes into the work of CBN World Reach to preach the gospel around the world. We're a lot more than just a TV show. We want to preach the gospel all around the world, and you can do it too when you join with us. So call us, 1-800-759-0700. We encourage you also when you call to join uh, Pledge Express. It's automatic monthly giving. When you join, uh, we save so much on the processing. We're able to send as our gift back to you CD teachings every single month called Power for Life. So if you want to join that, if you want to get Power for Life every month, join Pledge Express. You can do it automatically when you join through CBN.com. So do it right now. Christy. Well, Gordon, up next, we have an amazing man. Best-selling author Bishop Wellington Boone joins oh, us. Love him. Isn't he cool? Well, we're going to see how he made history in Africa after this. Hi, I'm Terry Mewson. I've had the privilege of traveling all around the world and seeing firsthand the difference you're making through your partnership. All around the world, you bring the hope of Jesus Christ to people who have nowhere to turn. In Haiti, you are there, bringing much needed medicine, clean water, and food to help the Haitian people through this disaster. And just like you did for I and her grandmother, when they lost their home, I lived for months in a chicken coop, battling lice, fleas, and cold, wet weather. That's when you rescued this family and provided a warm, loving home for I through Orphan's Promise. You filled her life with love and hope. Your monthly gift makes it possible to care for victims of disaster, feed the hungry, preach the gospel, and so much more. Please watch for this mailing and send in your pledge. Imagine giving someone hope for a better future. You do that every day, and it only happens because you were there. Finding video on CBN.com just got easier. We've taken all our video, the 700 Club, news, testimonies, teaching, plus our 24-7 channels, and put them in one convenient location. CBN TV. Watch what you want, when you want. It's all simple to find. And now, easier than ever to email a story to a friend. CBN TV on CBN.com. Welcome back to the 700 Club. Well, books like Your Wife is Not Your Mama and The Low Road to New Heights have actually made Wellington Boone a popular author. He's also a sought-after speaker and a founding pastor of the Father's House Church. And now a new opportunity has put Bishop Boone 
in the world spotlight. Take a look. Your problem is not understanding your wife. Your Bishop Wellington Boone is a best selling author, a nationally recognized speaker, and founder and overseer of ministries in the U.S. and South Africa. Bishop Boone was recently invited to speak with the Anglican bishops of Kenya. His message of conflict resolution is helping to rebuild unity and bring godly change to the continent. Please welcome back to the 700 Club, our, fr our friend, dear friend, Bishop Wellington Boone. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. You know I'm excited, Christy. <laughs> Okay, well, you just came back from an amazing trip from Africa. What, what was your role there, and why were you asked to go? Well, I talked with Episcopals here in this country, and some of the Episcopals here talked to the Anglican Bishop of, um, Archbishop of Kenya about what I talked to them about, which was conflict resolution. You know, the church should be in revival. We should be one 2,000 years after the resurrection. Of Jesus Christ, you know, and so the Anglican Archbishop of Kenya asked if I'd come over because, you know, a couple of years ago they had tribal warfares and mm -hmm. some real issues. So I said yes, and this is real very fast for me to say yes to that. Mm -hmm. And so Why I went over there, that? and it was was there hesitation? Well, do you say well, yes? Well, yes, there, there was uh, simply because I felt like there were still issues here in this country where we weren't totally modeling out the, the standards that we're talking. But I said, the Lord said, you got to get rid of, get over the psycho babble, get over there. <laughs> so uh, I did. I went over there and uh, I was amazed how open they were to the truth hmm. because that was what I had. I had to give them the truth. The first thing I did was, number one, repented to them hmm. as, a, as a black American for not coming over sooner to help them in terms of developing as a nation because you know those nations are developing we go to school say as a black to get a job mm -hmm. those guys were getting educated to run a country why they, was that significant that you had to repent to them tell us about that well, well simply because there's this idea that blacks in america thought uh... they were thinking we thought we were better than them hmm. but i had to say number one i repent for that but secondly i said that was an issue some of us are still need based in our thinking we still are thinking we have issues no less than to be able to go out globally talking about helping nations. We didn't have that nation building kind of mentality largely. 36 million blacks in America, only 500 full time outside the United States. Hmm. Do missions. Do missions, hmm. yes. So, but then secondly, I said, I forgive you for selling us uh, to slavery. Uh, hundreds of years ago because of tribal warfare. How did they respond to that? I was right. Hmm. So they had to say, okay. Okay. And so therefore, so this was really awesome that they were that open. You know, the Anglicans are humble. Yeah. Really humble for archbishops. You know, they are, uh, they have real authority. Talk to us about the Anglic Anglican Church, because a lot of us here in America, we're not really, um, we don't know a lot about it. So tell us about it, the significance of it, the power in it. Tell us. Well, number one, the great lake, lake countries, mm -hmm. which are like Uganda, Tanzania, Burundi, um, uh, Rwanda, Congo, they had revival that's been going on for 75 years. Hmm. And the Anglicans represent 25% of the population of Africa are Anglicans. And they are godly people. I, I've been using the Anglican prayer book for years because it was biblical. Hmm. And so some felt like because they weren't, um, you know, kind of charismatic, but they're totally open to the truth that, you know, there was no reason for us to unify. But those are influencers. They're using the Bible to apply to every area of life. So they, they want to do the Bible, but they want to apply it to law, civil government, education, science, medicine. And that's what I wanted to do, to go over there to say, this Bible applies, and I'm willing to help you with that. Hmm. Told them the truth. No, there was no wiggle room. I mean, I, I, I knew that if I went over there, I needed to, to lay it out like yeah. it was. You know what I was amazed by? About they said, come on with it. Really? We love it. And they responded. And uh, so I came back, talked with Jay Sekulow, because I wanted to know, Jay, what is going on? Because he put an office there in uh, Nairobi, Kenya. Oh. And he says, what you're doing is nation building. Mm -hmm. And so now I really got excited. So then Tanzania asked me to come over, the Archbishop of Tanzania, and numbers of others. But then he said, also, do you know also other godly people? who can come over and help us build our countries, not just a country, but countries, because those archbishops, Anglican archbishops, are interested in their country being godly countries and promoting that revival. 
Hmm. Okay. It seems like they don't necessarily have hang-ups about denominations as we have hang-ups on denominations. For instance, if we are, you know, a, Pentecost, a Pentecostal charismatic pastor, but it's an Anglican church, were they still receptive totally, to you? Totally receptive. Yeah. Uh, and uh, as a matter of fact, they just want, they thought that basically I was going to come over probably with um, a prosperity gospel. And they, they, they're not they're anti-prosperity. They already have money. Sure. They just need to know how to use it to build countries. Yeah. It's not that they're asking for handouts. These are very, they're educated people, but they want people who already have experience in some of these areas who put Jesus first and help us build our nation. They're that way. Did and you see the power of the Holy Spirit move as well? No question about it. Yeah. Preach the gospel. They, they came to me and said, this should be on television. <laughs> and I said, well, what do you mean? They said, all over the nation. I said, what do you mean? They said, what's the biggest television network here? They told me. And then I said, well, who should we talk, talk to? They said, oh, you were talking to the leader of the network when you talked in the cathedral this morning. Wow. They're people, people of influence. Yeah. And uh, even the, the Constitution that's being rewritten, they want it written according to the standards of the Bible. Mm. And modeling after, you know, the U.S. I mean, we've had one Constitution. Yeah. They're ready now. And actually, some of the sons of the archbishops, spiritual sons, are the ones coming in to report what their challenges are. They said pray because they came in while we were there, while mm -hmm. I was there, giving the archbishop the updates on what's happening with the Constitution. Hmm. And that was awesome to see, you know, because a lot of times we, some of us as spiritual leaders, we're not getting reports necessarily yeah. from the uh, political leaders coming to the religious leaders yeah. saying, you know, this is what we're doing. Is that okay? Yeah, 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 yeah. Interesting. I, you know what? We were talking about this before in the green room, and I know we can continue to talk, but one thing that I do want to speak about is your Dare to Hope. It's a devotional. It's a 30-day journey to hope. I was reading it this morning. Oh, yeah. Digging it, brother. Okay. I was digging it. Okay. I feel like I'm closer to Jesus already. Okay, so what's you. the significance of this other than you bringing me closer to Jesus? Well, another hope is that you would go to Africa and also talk with some of the women uh, back in October. They've asked, so I'm just kind of putting the word. How are you, you going to put that out there? You're you, putting it out there on out there. <laughs> television. <laughs> we will pray. We can hope. Let's okay, hope about that. Hope. There to hope. <laughs> That's right. So really quick, what is the significance but, of this and what do you hope with this? But we, we know that right now the culture is going through a lot of discouragement in a lot of ways. Economics sure. have forced us. But Jeremiah was that kind of person, too. After prophesying to the people, he became a product of the judgment of God, too, though I allowed him to go through it. But in the midst of him being down, he says, I will yet still dare to hope. Mm. And I'm calling the generation to take that dare, dare mm. to hope. In the midst of everything that's going on, God isn't surprised. He's ready to move out of our desperation. There is going to come a revelation of, of God's power. Amen, day. Bishop. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being here. Bishop Boone's devotional book is called Dare to Hope. It's available nationwide. Well, we leave you today with these words from Psalm 1611. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. God bless you. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Again. <laughs> Tomorrow. I just cried when I heard her story. How one children's book is changing the lives of an entire country. Our people need this information. I'm going to take what I learned here and share it with others. And then, doctors give up hope for one baby boy. He said your child is very, very sick, dying sick. So did his parents, but not this four-year-old girl. Ask anything in his name and it shall be done. Tomorrow on The 700 Club. While Mary feeds her two young daughters, she also helps feed needy families around the world. While Bob hands a drink out to a co-worker, he helps give water to villages with new wells. And while Carl builds a house for his son's new puppy, he helps rebuild homes in disaster areas. These people all have something in common. They're CBN partners who have joined Pledge Express. I hope you'll consider joining Pledge Express too. It's a way to simplify your own life while speeding help to others, all at the same time. There are no checks to remember or stamps to buy, and your gift goes to work faster, helping those who need it most. So join us and change the world for someone today.